Hello and welcome back to Paul's Beer Reviews and this time I have the latest collaboration uh, between British Heavy Metal Gods Iron Maiden and Robinson's Brewery. Uh, very excited about this one. This is a lager and it has sake in it. So Japanese sake which is, I don't know too much about it or I know it's made by fermenting rice or something like that. It's, I think it's primarily like a wine, um, but then they reduce the alcohol. I, I don't know, I know very little about it. I know it's made using rice and it's uh, like a national uh, drink in Japan. Anyway, they've come together and they've produced a sake infused lager and it's called Sun and Steel. And it's coming in at 4.8% ABV. There is Eddie. Iron Maiden's mascot, and he's all decked out like a Japanese samurai. As ever, um, very cool artwork. You've got the, the red dots of Japan's flag behind him there. Um, so yeah, Iron Maiden and Robertson. This is their sixth collaboration. Uh, and what's he say? Iron Maiden and Robertson's Brewery bring you Sun and Steel. Sun and Steel is a 4.8% double fermented pilsner infused with sake to produce a crisp, Refreshing taste with a flash of fruit. Uh, the sixth beer from Iron Maiden vocalist Bruce Dickinson and Robinson's Brewery. This project was over two years in the making, blending creative thinking, brewery, British brewing excellence and Japanese sake yeast to create a truly unique beer. Um, contains malt barley and wheat. Doesn't say much else about the ingredients, but yes, it's 4.8% ABV. Um, 330 ml bottle. I picked this up in Morrison's for £1.50 a bottle. There is the red Robinson's crown on this one. Quite smart. So, yes, let's get this uh, sake lager from Iron Maiden and Robinson's. Oh, it's a lively one. Why are you so lively? Come. Wow, smell on that. Calm yourself, Paul. Calm yourself. I thought that was going to fly everywhere, that one. I might have got away with it. So here we go. Saki Lager. Really have no idea what to expect from this. I know very little about Saki. Certainly looks like a lager. It's got a really interesting aroma. All of that in there. Very interesting aroma. A um, little bit of uh, not crazy amounts of carbonation. A few bubbles rising up in the glass there. It's maintained just over a finger of fluffy white head. Uh, very clear, golden looking pilsner. Um, yeah. Let's get an aroma on this sake lager, shall we? Does smell quite fruity? And there is, there is like a, a fermented aroma to it. That, that smell of, uh, how to describe it, almost like old sweated grass, if that makes any sense. If you've got like a bag of grass and you leave it out in the sun for a week or so, it, Starts kind of going sweet and had a weird kind of sort of fermented aroma to it, or a fermented smell to it. You're getting a bit of citrus. There's a bit of lemon, lemon sweetness to this one. And then there's a, definitely like a fermented aroma, which I can only assume is the is the sake. I feel really the way a hop's coming through. It, it's not a massive aroma. Let's get a taste. Cheers. Quite light, 
Um, good levels of carbonaceous, nice gentle fizz throughout. There's a bit of a sweetness to it. Um, it's like a bit of bit of citrus, bit of lemon, lime possibly. It's not doing much for me this one. There's a slightly strange aftertaste to it that I'm not familiar with. It's, this was always going to be a bit of an experience, this bun. Um, and I found out they'd done a beer with sake in it. I know nothing about sake. I've never drunk sake before. Um, this looks like a pilsner. It has that, that lager pilsner kind of carbonation level to it. Um, and there's a bit of citrus at the beginning, lemon, the lime again, which you would associate with, with you know, plenty of lagers and pilsners. Excuse me, it's a fizzy one. Slight bit of a malty. Sort of a biscuity malt in there. And you're left with this bitter, slightly bitterness at the back end. And a slightly weird, not overly pleasant aftertaste. Um, yeah. It's a sweet, citrusy, quite crisp, quite refreshing lager. But when you get to that hoppy finish, there's this. The, the sweetness kind of carries through all the way through the flavour, even at the end now, where I'm getting the bitterness for many hops that are in it. There's a strange kind of sweetness throughout. And again, I can only assume that that is the result of the fermentation process that goes into the making of sake, because I've never had anything with sake before, and I don't remember having a pilsner or a lager that's left me with this kind of taste in my mouth. Um, and I'm not overly keen, if I'm honest. Very light, very floral. This beer, very floral. As I say, there's a subtle fruity sweetness throughout. So it is refreshing. It is crisp. And that bitterness, that hoppy bitterness at the back end is there. And then there's this slight aftertaste that comes with it. And that fruitiness remains. I've got the bitterness and the hoppiness at the back of my tongue now, but still at the front of my tongue, I'm still getting that sweetness, that, that citrus sweetness, that fruity sweetness. I'm assuming a bit of the sake is having something to do with that as well. Um, I'd have to do some more research into sake, or maybe even try some properly and, you know, get an idea of the influence that it's had on this beer. Um, but it's certainly an interesting one. This isn't particularly cold. I've had it in the fridge only for about sort of 10, 15 minutes just to chill it slightly. I like to have my lagers cold, ice cold. And I did this deliberately, kept it out of the fridge deliberately because um, I wanted to taste what was going on with it. I wanted to know the sort of influence that Saki would have had on a lager. Um, and it, it's hard. I've not tasted something like this before. There is certainly an influence there that, in this beer that I'm not familiar with. Um, I've drunk most of it, to be fair. It's not unpleasant. Um, I'm just not... I, I've got... I bought another bottle. I bought two bottles. I might keep that one in the fridge for a while. Get that nice and cold and see what it tastes like. Ice cold, like I think most lagers should be tried. Um, 
it's a decent quality beer. There's some, there's obviously some work gone into it. It's very different. Um, pardon me, but going on the strength of this particular taste, I'm not sure I would buy this again. In fact, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't buy this again. Um, would I drink it again? Yeah, probably. If someone had it and they offered it to me, I wouldn't have a problem uh, drinking it again. It's really gassy. Excuse me. Quite a gassy one. Yeah. There's a citrus sweetness, a lightness to it. The sweetness carries through. And then there comes that, the hoppy bitterness at the back end. But that sweetness carries through with the hops. And it gives it a, an unfamiliar aftertaste. And, um, yeah, it's a bit different. It's a bit different, but why not? Um, so, yeah, Sun and Steel by Iron Maiden and Robinsons. Um, it's all good that breweries are trying different things. I'm all for that. I, I'm a massive fan of Iron Maiden, so I don't want to slag them off too much. Uh, but this beer is just not for me, personally. Um, but I'll give it a score. I, I will give this a 6 out of 10. I think that's um, a fair score. Like I say, they tried to do something different. It's not quite to my taste, but it's okay. So 6 out of 10 for Iron Maiden's Sun and Steel Saki Lager. Um, yeah, give the video a thumbs up. Leave your comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care.